Gundams. They're powerful, they're beautiful, and everyone wants them. Especially their enemies. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that stealing Gundams has become quite a thing in the various Gundam universes. So today I'll be having a look at all of the stolen Gundams. The series that popularized the trope of stealing Gundams is no doubt Zeta Gundam. Here the Titans were developing and testing the brand new Gundam Mark II, and as with every Gundam, this thing had some cool new features. The most important one being the movable frame technology. So when the Ayuk eventually managed to get their hands on not just one, but on all three of the Gundam Mark IIs, not only did they get three powerful Gundams, but they also got the technology that they needed to successfully create the Zeta Gundam, one of the most influential designs of the Grips War. But it wasn't actually the Mark II that was the first stolen Gundam per se. That honor goes back to the first Gundam when Amuro borrowed it without asking to go have a trip in the desert. In Double Zeta Gundam then, we ask the question, is it stealing if you just found it lying around and you just happened to pick it up? Because that's what Neo Zeong did when they found remains of the Psycho Gundam Mark II. And with the Titans basically wiped out anyways, who was going to complain? Also, Judo wanted to steal the Zeta Gundam, but he never completely succeeded and even ended up becoming its actual pilot. He's kind of like Hero with this I'll kill you thing, except here it's I'll steal you, and then he never ends up stealing it. One of the most devastating Gundam Jacks then was in 0083, when famous Zeon ace Anavel Gato managed to steal Gundam Unit 2 and its nuke. Can you imagine just losing a nuke? Ah, shit. Anyways, after this, the Federation decided to do the sensible thing and just went ahead with their naval review and didn't even bother upping the security around the giant bullseye they just created. It didn't end well. For the rebirth of the ideals of Zeon, for the success of Operation Stardust, Solomon, I have now returned! Not to be outdone, Federation Ensign Ko Uraki borrowed Unit 1 to go in pursuit of Unit 2, borrowed it again for a paintball match, and just because he could, he and his friends liberated Gundam Unit 3 and its complementary mobile armor. I also believe he's one of the only ones who actually faced any consequences for his actions. A significantly less successful attempt at stealing a Gundam can be found in G Gundam. Here, a local kid who was obsessed with Gundams thought it was a good idea to steal the God Gundam. The problem, of course, was that in order to pilot the Gundams from G Gundam, you need to be very physically strong. Otherwise, the strain exerted by the suit would simply crush you. Which was something this kid would have discovered the hard way if it wasn't for a last minute save by Domon. If you make a wrong move, you can end up crushing every bone in your body. Uh, I can't help it. It really hurts. Relax your body now. <sighs> Moving on to Gundam Wing. Here, all five original Gundams are technically stolen to some extent because all of them broke with the original Operation Meteor plan. Number one, four, and five simply had their orders changed. Number two had to put in a bit more effort and stole his Gundam completely against the wishes of its designer. <clears throat> Number three, though, had some complications. Uh, just watch me. I'll proceed with Operation Meteor if I must do so myself. <clears throat> and needed a replacement, so the Heavy Arms was definitely the most stolen Gundam of the original Gundam Wing Gundams. Later on in the series, then number six would join in on the stealing fun too, and would strategically take equipment to another location, the Wing Zero. The only problem here was that he was a shark clone, 
and the Wing Zero wasn't red, so he would later trade it with Hero for the red Epion. In Gundam X, we get to the point where stealing mobile suits isn't just something that the main character does, it's how he makes his actual living. And unlike Judo, Garrod is shown to be pretty damn good at it. So Stealing the double X from the new United Nations Earth was definitely more difficult than some of his other jobs, but it all worked out in the end. The general in charge of the double X thought it was completely secure because he held the G controller that was required to activate it. However, because the Gundam Double X was built using parts from a normal Gundam X, the same type of Gundam that Garrett was also using, he could simply use his own G controller and commandeer the Double X anyways. When we get to the Cosmic Era then, it's basically Grand Theft Gundam. I'm being 100% serious when I say that it would be easier to make a list of Gundams that weren't stolen, borrowed or otherwise acquired. It all starts with the original five Gundams, four of which had like five seconds of screen time before being stolen by Zaft Commandos, escorted by my favorite Japanese musician. The remaining one then, the Strike, would see some unauthorized use before being destroyed and having its remains collected by Orb after which it is reconstructed and put into their service. Although it's not all bad news for the Earth Alliance. One of the four previously stolen units would become unstolen when the Archangel recovered the Buster Gundam. This lasted all of five minutes as the whole damn ship would shortly thereafter defect to Orb, taking the aforementioned Buster Gundam with it. But as bad as things were for the Earth Alliance, Zaft had it way worse statistically. Of the three Zaft Gundams that made it into the anime, none would remain in their possession. The first one to be stolen was the nuclear-powered Freedom Gundam. What makes this especially egregious was that this Gundam contained the so-called N-Jammer Canceller, which could give the Earth Alliance access to their nuclear arsenal again, and as we've seen in the past, ordering a nuclear strike was kind of their go-to strategy, so this was absolutely something they did not want to have stolen. And then it was stolen by a pop idol who until recently had a hard time even grasping the concept of war. <sighs> this then left Zaf with its sister unit, the Justice Gundam, which was handed to Atheron along with the mission to go retrieve the stolen Freedom Gundam. This plan backfired. To make sure that their last remaining Gundam definitely was not stolen, they gave it to one of their most trusted and distinguished commanders who totally didn't just leak and gemmer cancer technology to the Earth Alliance, causing the immediate and total destruction of one of their most important fortresses guarding the plants. At the very least, Ra still fought against the Earth Alliance because he literally wanted to kill everyone. This streak of bad luck would continue for Zaft and Gundam Sea Destiny when three of their four next-gen Gundams were stolen by Earth Alliance Special Forces. Karma's a bitch. By the time of Double O then, people were seemingly beginning to catch on to the fact that these high-tech machines were very prone to being stolen. So they secured them with biometric sensors. Wouldn't it be a shame if someone would be able to bypass those due to a certain hacking crisis? And so Ali al Sach has got his hands on his very own Gundam. At least later on in the series, these security measures would actually prevent a Gundam from being stolen. As for the O Gundam being kinda stolen by Ribbon's Allmark at the end of the series then, 
is it really stealing if that Gundam was kind of the one that belonged to you to begin with? In Gundam Age then we get another security measure for the main Gundam. Basically the so-called Age device acted as a key that was required to start up the Gundam. This key was then stolen by a 7 year old kid who jumped into the Gundam's cockpit and knew exactly what to do. Fortunately for Flit, the kid did return to Gundam after he had his fun. With Rick and Gista in G, then we go back to the idea of Double O to have some kind of system to prevent unauthorized people from activating the main Gundam. The G self was originally designed to be piloted by Raraya, but the so called Ray Hunting code was injected into the machine, also allowing the two missing Ray Hunting children, Ida and Bellary, to pilot the mobile suit. This ended up exactly how you've come to expect from the rest of this list. After Reconquista and G, we got Gundam Unicorn, and even though I don't feel like any of the Gundams got stolen per se, I felt like I needed to mention it regardless because otherwise some people might comment about it. Despite all the side changing going on, the Unicorn kinda belongs to Benajer and stays with Benajer. As for the Banshee, that thing goes along perfectly with whatever shady plan the Vist Foundation has. Although it is fair to say that Alberto helped Riddy to acquire the Banshee to carry out his plan that kinda went against the plans of his sister. The Phoenix from Gundam NT then is even more complicated because it forces us to ask the question, can a new type soul steal a Gundam? You make up your own mind. Moving along to Iron-Blooded Orphans then, and here we again get to some more clear-cut cases of Gundams being stolen. The most famous one is no doubt the theft of the Bale Gundam or the Bael Gundam by McGillis. And what's so interesting about this is that unlike many others on the list, he didn't just steal this machine because it was a high-performance Gundam, but also because of the political message that it sent. This was the first ever Gundam made by Gallerhorn and was also piloted by its founder, Agnica. So by procuring it, he wanted to give more legitimacy to himself after his coup. <laughs> The second Gundam to forcibly change hands was the Gushin, which was then turned into the Gushin Rebake. Although to be fair to Tekadon, the Brewers, the group in control of the Gushin, were the ones who opened hostilities with Tekadon, and them losing the Gushin to Tekadon was merely part of the post-conflict settlement. And that is all for this long list of stolen Gundams. At least for now, because this trope isn't going to die out anytime soon. If I've learned anything today, it is definitely that if I ever get my hands on a real Gundam, I'm investing in some top-notch security to protect the damn thing. So if you want more similar content, be sure to like and subscribe. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.